Welcome to Daily Scripture and Meditation with Shirley Sethys Jackson. We begin, as always, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thursday, the 27th of May, 2021, in the eighth week in Ordinary Time, is the Feast of St. Augustine of Canterbury, who died around 604. Italian monk sent by Pope St. Gregory the Great to evangelize the Anglo-Saxon who conquered England and dominated the original Celtic population who embraced Christianity centuries earlier. St. Augustine baptized Ethelbert, the Anglo-Saxon king, and the people followed their king into the church. St. Augustine made Canterbury his episcopal see and became the first primate of all England. Our Daily Prayer Lord Jesus, may I never fail to recognize my need for your grace and mercy. Strengthen my faith and trust in you that I may seek your presence daily and listen to your word with a readiness to follow you who are my all. Amen. Magnifica, Daily Scripture But first, more about our optional memorial on St. Augustine of Canterbury. A native of Italy, Augustine established himself in monastic life, rising to be the prior of the house of St. Andrew on the Caelian Hill in Rome. His life took a dramatic turn when his fellow monk, Gregory, was elected Roman Pontiff. From the first time he had seen Anglo-Saxon slaves in the Roman marketplace, Gregory had dreamt of preaching the gospel to the pagan tribes that ruled much of England. Augustine was the man he chose to lead the mission. When Augustine reached the Saxons, he succeeded in converting Ethelbert, their leader. Augustine was made Archbishop and Canterbury the primal see of the region. He died around the year 604. The glory of the Lord fills all his works. A reading from the book of Sirach, chapter 42, verse 15. Now will I recall God's work. What I have seen I will describe. At God's word were his works brought into being. They do his will as he has ordained for them. As the rising sun is clear to all, so the glory of the Lord fills all his works. Yet even God's holy ones must fail in recounting the wonders of the Lord. Though God has given these, his hosts, the strength to stand firm before his glory, He plumbs the depths and penetrates the heart, their innermost being he understands. The Most High possesses all knowledge and sees from of old the things that are to come. He makes known the past and the future and reveals the deepest secrets. No understanding does he lack. No single thing escapes him. Perennial is his almighty wisdom. He is from all eternity one and the same, with nothing added, nothing taken away, no need of a counselor for him. How beautiful are all his works, even to the spark and the fleeting vision. The universe lives and abides forever to meet each need. Each creature is preserved. All of them differ one from another, yet none of them has he made in vain. For each in turn, as it comes, is good. Can one ever see enough of their splendor? The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 33 By the word of the Lord the heavens were made. Give thanks to the Lord on the harp, 
with the tin string lyre chant his praises. Sing to him a new song, pluck the strings skillfully with shouts of gladness. For upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. By the breath of his mouth, all their hosts. He gathers the waters of the sea as in a flask. In cellars, he confines the deep. Let all the earth fear the Lord, let all who dwell in the world revere him. For he spoke, and it was made. He commanded, and it stood forth. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Alleluia, Alleluia. Master, I want to see. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark chapter 10, verse 46. As Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a sizable crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind man, the son of Timaeus, sat by the roadside begging. On hearing that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he kept calling out all the more, Son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called the blind man, saying to him, Take courage, get up. Jesus is calling you. He threw aside his cloak, sprang up, and came to Jesus. Jesus said to him in reply, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man replied to him, Master, I want to see. Jesus told him, Go your way. Your faith has saved you. Immediately he received his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Magnificat Meditation of the Day is entitled, What We Must Keep Crying Out. We pray to you, loving and attentive Lord Jesus Christ, our God, And we beg with every supplication through the intercession of the blessed and glorious ever-Virgin Mary, all the holy angels, archangels, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, martyrs, confessors, virgins, monks, and of all those who dwell in heaven. Increase the faith of your Catholic Church. Give peace and grant leniency to us and the remission of sins. Amen. Grant health to the sick, aid to the fallen, good weather to sailors, a prosperous journey and a haven of safety to the faithful. Joy to those undergoing tribulation, relief to the oppressed, remission, freedom and return to their homeland to captives, those in bonds and pilgrims. Amen. Be gracious and deign to grant your holy angel here and everywhere as guide. Mutual charity to those fighting, true faith to unbelievers, and eternal rest to the faithful departed. This meditation is a prayer for the church by Alcuin of York, who died in 804 and was born of a noble Anglo-Saxon family and became a prominent scholar and counselor for Charlemagne. Laudate Daily Bible Verse Entitled The Feast of St. Augustine of Canterbury Quote 
As Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a sizable crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind man, the son of Timaeus, sat by the roadside begging. On hearing that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he kept calling out all the more, Son of David, have pity on me. Unquote. Mark 10.46 Our key scripture introduces us to the lovable character Bartimaeus. He teaches us that great faith is born of great need. It reminds us of the maxim, No cross, no crown. No trial, no triumph. Bartimaeus used the liability of his blindness to climb the ladder of faith to meet the son of David, who was impressed by his determination and faith, and said to Bartimaeus, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man replied to him, Master, I want to see. Jesus told him, Go your way. Your faith has saved you. Immediately he received his sight and followed him on the way. Mark 10.51 What a truly beautiful story. Won't you like to have the faith and courage of Bartimaeus? Not when we shrink from the least discomfort. Our pains and trials could be the setting for the powerful and merciful providence of God to elevate our faith and bring us the kind of healing we need. Jesus, I trust in your merciful love. I remain steadfast in your love. I cling tightly to your love, come what may. I believe firmly in your loving and powerful providence. I do not depend on my filthy works. I surrender myself completely to you. Take care of everything your way according to your plan for my life. Amen. Laudate, Reflections and Actionable Challenges from Our Scriptural Readings Introductory Prayer once again, Lord, I come to you to pray. Even though I cannot see you, I trust that you are present and very much want to instruct me in your teachings. In the same way that you demonstrate your love for me by spending this time with me, I want to express my love for you by dedicating this time to you with a spirit of faith, confidence, and attention. Here I am, Lord to listen to you and respond with love. Amen. Our petition for the next three challenges. Lord, grant me to be a courageous witness of you and your kingdom. Our first challenge, attentive listening. We need to hear Christ telling us in our hearts to go and preach with our lives. We spend so much time thinking about ourselves and so little time thinking about Jesus and his kingdom. Through baptism, he has called us not just to know about our faith, but to act on it and share it with others. The blind beggar was attentive to Jesus passing by. This attentiveness was the first step to his cure. Our second challenge, fearless proclamation. Christ wants us to be as St. Paul was, bold in preaching and defending the truth. He wants us to overcome human respect. Many times we catch ourselves being influenced by what others think and say, and we are incapable of being ourselves. The world tries to intimidate us by laughing at us and making us look ridiculous. 
What they really want to do is just force us to live our faith in a private manner without bearing witness to Christ and the truth. At those times we should be like Bartimaeus, crying out even more loudly, standing up for what is right, and sticking by it at all times. It's going to cost us, but then again, didn't it cost Christ his life to stand up for the truth? Our third challenge, restoration of sight. Blind Bartimaeus's life would never again be the same. He was completely transformed by Christ interiorly. Even his physical ailment was cured. He could see again. To see means to understand our life and all it entails from God's perspective. To see means that we are happy, fulfilling God's will for us, no matter what God is asking of us. Our Conversation with Christ Lord Jesus, I ask you to help me to see the great things you are doing in my life. Help me to see the moments of the cross as true opportunities to grow in my personal relationship with you. Our Resolution I will use Jesus Christ's name and example in a conversation I have with someone today. Meditation Have you ever encountered a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity you knew you knew you could not pass up? Such a moment came for a blind and destitute man named Bartimaeus. He was determined to get near the one person who could meet his need. He knew who Jesus was and had heard of his fame for healing but until now had no means of making contact with the son of David, a clear reference and title for the Messiah. Seeking Jesus with effort and persistence pays off. It took a lot of guts, courage, and persistence for Bartimaeus to get the attention of Jesus over the din of a noisy throng who crowded around Jesus as he made his way out of town. Why was the crowd annoyed with the blind man's persistent shouts? He was disturbing their peace and interrupting Jesus' discourse. It was common for a rabbi to teach as he walked with others. Jesus was on his way to celebrate the Passover in Jerusalem and the band of pilgrims followed him. When the crowd tried to silence the blind man, he overpowered them with his emotional outbursts and thus caught the attention of Jesus. Goodness and mercy follows those who put their trust in God. This incident reveals something important about how God interacts with us. The blind man was determined to get Jesus' attention and he was persistent in the face of opposition. Jesus could have ignored or rebuffed him because he was disturbing his talk and his audience. Jesus showed that acting was more important than talking. This man was in desperate need and Jesus was ready, not only to empathize with his suffering, but to relieve it as well. A great speaker can command attention and respect, but a man or woman with a helping hand and a big heart is loved more. What 
do you want Jesus to do for you? Why did Jesus put a question to Bartimaeus? What do you want me to do for you? Jesus wanted to draw out of him a personal response of faith and trust in his power to heal and make whole. Jesus commends Bartimaeus for recognizing who he is with the eyes of faith and grants him physical sight as well. Do you recognize the Lord Jesus with eyes of faith as your merciful Lord and healer? Ask the Lord Jesus to strengthen your faith that you may draw near to him and receive his grace and mercy. Lord Jesus, may I never fail to recognize my need for your grace and mercy. Strengthen my faith and trust in you, that I may seek your presence daily and listen to your word with a readiness to follow you who are my all. Amen. Further Reflection How to be healed Quote, He began to call out, Jesus, Son of David, have pity on me. Unquote. Mark 10.47 It's hard to admit weakness, sin, or even sickness. The blindness of pride often prevents us from being healed of other kinds of blindness. After Bartimaeus began calling out, many people were scolding him to make him keep quiet, but he shouted all the louder. Mark 10.48 after we humble ourselves, the next obstacle to healing is often worrying about what other people think of us. Often, to receive healing, it is necessary to look like a fool in the eyes of the world. Then Jesus stopped and said, Call him over. Mark 10.49 Bartimaeus threw aside his cloak, jumped up, and came to Jesus. Mark 10.50 His jump was a great leap of faith. Blind people don't make sudden moves. If they jump up, they don't know what might happen since they don't know what's above them. Jesus said to Bartimaeus, Be on your way, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and started to follow him up the road. Mark 10.52 What's standing in the way of your healing? Are you too proud to admit you need help? Are you too proud to confess your sins? Are you too cool to be healed? Are you paralyzed by the thought of being laughed at? Are you unwilling to become a fool for Christ? 1 Corinthians 4.10 If you jump up or down, do you believe Jesus will catch you? Don't let anything or anyone prevent you from receiving your healing and your healer, Jesus. Our prayer. Lord Jesus, I want to see. Mark 10.51 God's promise to us, the Most High possesses all knowledge and sees from of old the things that are to come. He makes known the past and the future and reveals the deepest secrets. Sirach 42.18 Thomas A. Kempis quote from the Imitation of Christ No man is fit to comprehend heavenly things who hath not resigned himself to suffer adversities for Christ.
We are God's hands, feet, and voice. May His peace rest upon you as you go and announce the gospel of the Lord in your words and deeds. Thank you for joining today. Abundant blessings upon you and yours. Amen. We close as always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.